Well, this one looks a little bit familiar. I wonder how this company has been doing in these past couple months. Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome back to another stock analysis video. Today, guys, let's actually come back and analyze, or at least reanalyze, the company Encore Wire. Now, this was, was brought up by Tony Myers recently with two other ones. However, guys, I've actually covered this one already before in the past, but it has been a while. And from what I can remember, I believe I liked it now i'm going off of memory don't really remember the fundamentals though but based off of that i believe that i did like it and i did say in my past video that i did think it had a lot of applications because well their main industry is for copper wires and i don't think that's an industry that will ever go away or ever go out of style so with that said let's get started with this analysis and the first thing that i would actually like to cover guys it is their earnings because their earnings was on october 25th of this year and they were they were something all right eps normally like actual came in at nine dollars 97 cents which was a beat by three dollars and 16 cents that's insane same thing for the eps gap actual same exact nine dollars 97 cents been beat by three dollars and 16 and the revenue actual 762 0.36 million dollars which is a beat by 69.23 million dollars so now coming into the calculator we got the ticker symbol for wire market cap of 2.5 billion dollars a pe of 3.85 with a current share price of a whopping 136 dollars and 90 cents that's surprising because if we actually take a look at this company's stock on the one year guys they're actually up 3.67 and on the year to date, they're actually down almost 3%. 52 week ranges is actually $94.39 to $155.36. So we're actually at the higher end of this 52 week range with a $137 price tag with a PE of 3.85. This is becoming a real anomaly. Really would like to take a look at their fundamentals. They do pay out an annual dividend of 8 cents per share, which ends up being a yield of 0 0.06 payout ratio of 0.23, zero five year CAGR, and zero consecutive years of dividend growth. And the reason why they don't have any CAGR or any years of consecutive growth is because, well, within the past five years, they have kept the guys at two cents per share. And not only five years, guys, 10 years and even since their inception pretty much at least when they started putting out the dividend back in 2007 january 2nd 2007 they paid out two cents so at least you have consistency of anything when it comes to this dividend x dividend day is actually coming up on january 5th and payout day is on the 20th of this month just the day after my mom's birthday and they pay their dividends quarterly now based off of the current shares outstanding they pay out only 1.5 million dollars in dividends dividends every single year and after this is paid off guys based off of their five-year average free cash flow they still have left 80 million dollars and as of their last year's free cash flow they have 300 million dollars which is absolutely crazy these payout ratios are well half of a percent for the last year's free cash flow and 1.8 percent for the five-year average meaning that this eight cents they can afford it and on top of that they could even increase it a little bit but to be fair they haven't done that ever so don't expect that but they can at least afford it now let's come into the fundamentals starting of course with an income five years ago of 67 million dollars two one year ago of 541.4 million dollars increase of 708 percent on the five year now my main gripe with this company at least when it comes to their profit metrics and you guys are going to see it is this right here this massive outlier from two years ago to one year ago now obviously you could say pent up demand right inflation causes to go up because then people had excess money so this is inflated i guess you could say this 541.4 million dollars isn't really real but it is real if you guys get exactly what i'm saying basically so much money was had in people's pockets that they spent it and companies like this got a massive massive jump as you guys can see right here but nonetheless i still don't like the kind of jump because it gives uncertainty to me that maybe they'll be able to continue this in the future or not and the uncertainty is something that i don't necessarily like but aside from that they did have one year going from four to three years ago that they did go down and then they recovered it so i have no idea what i'm actually gonna put for this i'm gonna go with like the safe bet of like 50 percent because i honestly guys i just do not know where this is going in 
in the future. When it comes to the free cash flow, we got five years ago of 26.2 million to one year ago of 300.1 million dollars, increase of 1,045% with an average of 81.34 million dollars. Now we do have that massive jump once again, one year ago. However, two years ago, they actually went negative, negative 28.6 million dollars. So they definitely had a lot more capital expenditures or their cash flow operations went down. Definitely do more research on which of those two occurred. But even with that, guys, that is still a massive, massive jump just to go with an average of like 55, 50 million dollars from five to three years ago to 300 million. That's a little bit too much for me. I don't necessarily like that. And seeing that they do have a negative number, I'm gonna give this a 45%. Into the revenue, we see something similar one more time, 1.2 billion dollars to one year ago of 2.6 billion dollars, increase of 122.7%. Now the jump wasn't as much as we have seen before, but it is still a pretty big jump going from 1.28 billion to, as I said, $2.6 billion. It's still a very, very big jump, guys. And not to mention that from four to three years ago, they did go down similar as to that of the free cash flow. From four to five years ago, they went down. And, and even when it came to the net income, they also went down from four to three years ago. So definitely something happened this time period over here that caused this. So definitely do your own due diligence on that one. So I'm going to essentially take that into account, but there's still a massive, massive jump right here, guys. So I'm gonna give it one more time a 50%. Total assets minus total liabilities. This one's actually looking fairly decent. There are outliers, but they're not that bad. The biggest one was from two years ago to one year ago, going from $837.8 million to $1.34 billion, billion with a B. Now, as of today, we are seeing that they're able to continue this replication into several billions of dollars. Currently, they're at $1.7 billion. So that may give credence that when it came to the revenue, free cash flow, and the net income, we might actually see this very high in this year. In fact, it might actually be higher than this one year ago. And you know what, guys? I said I wasn't going to do it, but I decided, eh, I'm going to do it anyways. Here is the net income as of Seeking Alpha in the trailing 12 months. So essentially this year, we went from 541.4 million to 705.5 million. So, you know, this is actually looking like they might be able to replicate it in the future. Now, I'm not going to change my grade because I, it, I'm still scared. Like, I, I just feel really, really uncertain that they might continue this in the next four years, right? You have to think long term when it comes to this. No, four years isn't long term. Long term is like 10 years. But think about it. If you don't believe it'll happen in four years, no way it's going to happen in 10. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Full stop right there. Okay, so I'm watching this back. I'm editing it right now. And that part that I just said there makes absolutely no sense. I'm so terribly sorry. I was really tired when I was doing this video, guys. But what I'm basically trying to say is that you don't want to get into a trap that the net income and the profit metrics just spiked up massively. And then you get yourself stuck into like a Cisco situation where... 22 years later, actually almost 23 years later, after the dot-com crash, even though Cisco's profits have been increasing afterwards, they have still yet to reach that share price. That's essentially what I'm trying to say, is that you don't want to overpay for growth if it is an overvaluation when it comes to the profit metrics. So definitely something to think about. Now, when it comes back to the assets minus liabilities, this isn't looking too bad at $1.7 billion today. Average total assets is around $1.22 billion. Average liabilities is only like $144.02 million. Doing this difference, we get almost $1.1 billion. I'm gonna give this a very good score of like 90%. Coming down to the cash flow minus liabilities, this is actually looking really, really good. This is now the second company that I've done in a row where they actually have a positive cash flow minus liabilities as of recently. And take a look at this. They also have five to four years ago, they went up a little bit. Now they did reach their lowest point two years ago. That's a COVID related thing, guys. Not necessarily that important. The one I like is this one, the one year ago value, looking really, really good. They're up positive $101.8 million in this diff. Average cash flow, minus the average total liabilities, we get negative $62.68 million. I'm going to have to give this like a 95%. Maybe, actually, no, I'm going to go with like a 98 because, I mean, this positive number, it just has so much weight for me. And then on top of that, they did go up from five to four years ago. So, 
I'm going to give it a 98%. And now moving into the shares outstanding, this one's also looking good. However, they did have instances where they issued shares, but on the five year scale, they are buying back, going from 20.8 million shares to 18.3 million shares. That's a buyback of 12% from the five year scale and almost a 9% buyback on the previous year to the current year. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. And yeah, that's actually looking really, really good for a company this small when with a company with this small amount of PE. But you want to know something? Let's actually see what this kind of free cash flow says, because the reason why they may have been doing this massive buyback this past year is probably because they were like, our share price is so good right now. Let's buy it back because I mean, come on, it's so it's so cheap. We need to buy it back. So that's really, really good. But they did have instances where they increased it, like for example, going from five to four years ago, but then they kept it flat from four to three, then they bought it back from three to two, and then they kept buying back. So I, I, I'm gonna give this like a 95%. This was looking also really, really solid. And lastly, when it comes to the cash equivalents, they currently hold $573.6 million with an average of 288 million. 0.08 million dollars looking now at the overall grades guys we gave them an income of 50 percent free cash flow 45 percent revenue 50 percent assets minus liabilities 90 percent cash flow minus liabilities 98 percent shares outstanding of 95 percent for an overall grade of honestly 64 now this is still not above 70 but Honestly, my main gripe is with these profit metrics, and I just showed you guys that, at least when it comes to the net income, they are able to essentially surpass last year's net income with this year's net income. If you believe in this company, that this company might be able to continue surpassing their profit metrics year over year, like we just saw with this net income and possibly even the revenue, you might want to put this a lot higher, right? So if that's the case, then this will definitely be above 70% easy. All right, now let's come over here to the discounted free cash flow and make some assumptions. Low, median, high using revenue growth, a protected share buyback, and a required rate of return, which I like to keep flat at 10%. Now, take a look at this, guys. Not adjusting for debt, we're still fairly under the current share price. However, adjusting for debt, this jumps up massively. Yeah, guys, they essentially just have no net debt in comparison to that of their cash and equivalent. So, let's actually come over here to take off and see that the forward is 25%. Now, I don't believe that in the slightest, so I'm going to go fairly conservative of 10, 12, and 14% for the revenue growth for each assumption. And for the protected share buyback, we saw that they were buying back at around 12% on the five years. So let's actually say at around for a future projection, five, six, and seven percent. Now, with that, guys, we get the target share prices not just for debt of $100.15 and fifteen cents to $116.54. And just for debt, this is $233.26, all the way up to $266.72. Adding a margin of safety, 5, 10, 15 percent. This is puts me between $198.27 at the lowest assumption, 15% margin of safety, to the highest assumption, the 5% margin of safety of $253.38. So with the current share price of almost $137, this is looking really, really solid, guys. Now, obviously, this is just based off of my assumptions. Please do your own due diligence because, again, I don't believe that they'll continue to go up that massively, at least when it comes to like their profit metrics, right? As I was saying earlier in the video. But if you guys believe that they will, that's definitely something to take into account here. You may want to increase your revenue growth projections. So please, this is not financial advice. This is the reason why I have these calculators available for free and every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. I say that a lot, yet I never really explained what that means. So I'll probably make a video explaining what that actually means probably this week as like a good Christmas day kind of video for all of you guys. So be on the lookout for that video at around like Saturday or so. Anyways, guys, please have these calculators are available for free for that reason. Make your own assumptions. I also have my book value calculator, reevaluation calculator, and a dividend tracking sheet for everybody to have. All I'm asking for in return for free calculators, free daily content, it's just help me grow my channel. That's about it. Like, subscribe, comment. It really does help you with the algorithm on you. You guys have no idea how much just like a like helps. It helps a lot. Like, no joke. It really, really does. And a comment also goes a lot too. Even if you just say like, 
high right that still works for the youtube algorithm it still helps me out so if you guys like what i do if you guys want to support me i'm not going to sell you guys anything i don't have anything behind the paywall i'm not going to make courses i'm not a fan of that at all actually all i'm asking for in return is just help me grow my channel my subscribe comment we're almost up to 1700 subscribers if we could reach that by the end of december that would be crazy and i think it's a pretty doable goal so let's try to get to 1700 subscribers by the end of december that would be absolutely crazy so now when it comes to this dividend guys they don't pay out a big dividends per share eight cents in annual dividends per share but let's entertain this a little bit putting in five thousand seven hundred and twenty five dollars we get forty one point eight two shares which is three dollars and thirty five cents in annual dividends that's three dollars <laughs> in the annual dividends that's not a lot but but you know at least you could say consistency right i mean ever since what 2007 with this company they've been paying out two cents per share so i it's not increasing true but you do have consistency that's all i'm gonna say but aside from that guys when it comes to dividend play yeah it could be a whole lot better you guys could do a whole lot better when it comes to this company all in all wire i understand why i liked it the first time thank you again for the recommendation tony i it was nice actually revisiting this my con one concern man it's just i don't know if they're able to replicate those profit metrics those, those massive spikes because again it, it, it goes back to the sense of every investment is the present value of all future cash flow if you believe that that thing is going to continue at that point like making newer newer highs from that massive spike like this company you should be willing to pay a whole lot more for this company today but then again what is possible isn't necessarily what is probable so definitely something to think about when making these analysis for yourselves that pretty much does it for this video buddy like if you like comment subscribe it really does help with the algorithm on youtube you guys can follow me on my youtube site i'll link in the description below so with that said peace out and i will see you all in the next stock analysis of video